Good evening. I'm Stuart Ikeda. I'm a commissioner on the new Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. I'm also a resident of East Arlington, the Capitol Square area, and I'm a relatively New Arlingtonian, and I love what's happening in this town. Arlington is undergoing a cultural renaissance. This season alone has seen the kickoff of the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture, the launch of a new artsarlington.org website, the grand reopening of the Arlington Center for the Arts, and an explosion of public art projects. Tonight we're going to share just a couple of examples of new art projects and cultural partnerships that are enriching our neighborhoods townwide. You may have noticed a lot more color around town recently, from the yarn bombs on the bike path to the wildlife mural at Za to the colorfully decorated bus stops along Mass Avenue. Well, at the center of so much of this activity is Cecily Miller, the town's first official public art curator. She's here tonight to share with us some of the exciting bus stop art project details and talk about some of the public art uh, that's been enlivening and enriching our town. Uh, Cecily, hi. Thanks, Stuart. Um, thank you so much for inviting me in to talk about stuff. Um, one of the things that's happened over the last year is Arlington Public Art has now become an official part of the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. So we're really all working together in coordination and it's making things so much stronger and easier and more powerful. It's really wonderful. Um, so I've been working in Arlington now for about three years and my goal is working with the community to, to develop innovative ways to get art out into public spaces. When we talk about public art, we're not necessarily talking about a sculpture in the middle of a plaza or even an artist-made bench. Um, we're talking about more participatory projects to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Minuteman Bikeway, for example. Um, we did a call to the community for haiku and painted 100 haiku in Arlington, Lexington, and Bedford, 10 miles of um, the bikeway. Uh, celebrating the artistry in all of us. And what a win-win-win for all yeah. three of our towns. Yeah. So um, we're continuing to put artwork on the Minuteman bikeway. Uh, people will see a set of postcards coming out in plexi boxes um, that are a kind of guide to local birds with some tips on how you can help protect them. A lot of people have probably seen a kind of amazing uh, bird village on a tree near Linwood Street, near Spy Pond, that an artist named Christopher Frost um, developed. And people in the neighborhood have started adding little figures to this magical castle and condominium that he has made, a sculptural village for birds. So there's a lot happening, but to today we were going to focus on five bus shelters, an amazing project that Arlington Public Art did in close partnership with the town's Planning and Community Development Office, and with the MBTA. And the support of the Barr Foundation. Absolutely. We couldn't have done it without the support of the Barr Foundation. Um, it's a really ambitious project, and we, we did it all to support the town's efforts to improve public transportation. What we were doing was landmarking the bus route, landmarking the bus shelters, giving people waiting for the bus a more positive experience, and getting art into the places that people use. And successfully so. Yeah. So let's look at some of them. Okay, great. Can you tell me about them? Yes. When I started working in Arlington a few years ago, I had my eye on these bus shelters. I was very intrigued by them. I thought they had a lot of potential to be a great environment for bringing art into the public spaces along Mass Avenue. My colleague, uh, Ali Carter, who works in the planning department, asked if I was interested in developing a public art component to support the town's BRT pilot. I was like, absolutely, sign me up. Um, I was able to invite an amazing group of artists to use their imagination and creative skills to transform all five bus shelters along Mass Avenue with uh, the goals of making it more interesting to wait for the bus, landmarking the bus route, and creating a buzz. The public art would reveal and celebrate that something important was going on with the bus service in the town of Arlington. And each bus shelter is different. Each one has its own magic. So I'm going to show images of all of the shelters. 
Um, and just want to mention first that none of this could have happened without the support of the Barr Foundation and the MBTA. Both of these organizations made our project possible at each step of the way. The first bus shelter I'm going to talk about uh, was created by an artist named Sneha Shrestha. Sneha is a street artist originally from Nepal. She goes by Imagine when she's painting walls around town. She just painted an enormous 80-foot wall in Central Square in Cambridge. For the artwork in her shelter, she actually drew on a computer and the design was digitally printed on film and put on the glass um, installed by professional art installers. Sneha's design is interactive. Bus riders are invited to put a dot onto the names of streets and roads that mean something to them. Could be where you live, could be where you're headed, could be a friend's house. And we're hoping by the end of the uh, exhibition period, which is the end of November, there'll be lots of dots all over um, this bus shelter. The second project is by Eileen de Rosas. Eileen de Rosas is actually a ceramic artist in most of her artwork. She normally paints by hand on plates, bowls, mugs, vases, you name it. Um, for her bus shelter, she wanted to do something that expressed her concern about the welfare of local wildlife, and so she made them her subject. She created portraits by hand using paint markers of animals you might see in your neighborhood. Eileen played uh, with the different views that you can get when you're waiting in the bus shelter or when you're looking through the bus shelter. Here are some details of the very expressive faces of the animals that she chose to portray. And if you take a look at this rabbit when you're inside the bus shelter, it tells one story, simply a rabbit hopping along through the flowers. But when you look the other direction, you can see that there's a coyote lurking in the distance. And here a local dog is investigating that coyote. The third bus shelter is by two collaborating artists, Claudia Ravichier and Mike Moss. Um, they often experiment with new materials. Their, for their bus shelter, they propose to cover the glass panels with a dichroic film. It was really difficult to know in advance what this bus shelter was going to look like. No one had ever done anything like this before. Mike and Claudia found a team of installers that could handle the technical challenge of um, installing the dichroic film so that it would fit perfectly on the panels. And the installers came out and carefully put the, this extremely expensive film down. You can see that the film diffracts the light to make exciting color effects that change with the time of day and your own movement. Sometimes the film is reflective. Sometimes it has an effect of a mirror reflecting everything around it. And standing in this shelter can be almost like standing in a soap bubble. It casts very vivid colors on the pavement and inside. The fourth bus shelter that uh, I wanted to discuss was created by an artist named James Weinberg. He's a Somerville artist who actually does a lot of silk screening. Um, he rides his bike in Arlington and appreciates the green space and nature he finds here. So he did his design um, exploring the seasons and the effect of the seasons on nature. He created a very complicated patterned environment um, digitally. And this was printed in layers on film, again, like the piece that Sneha did, and installed by professional installers. And when the sun comes through this clear film, this clear printed film, the effect is um, really beautiful, almost like being in a terrarium. From the outside, uh, you can see the bottom layer of white that is underneath the colors that print the most strongly. Without that white, everything would be transparent and washed out. So the white gives punch to the design. And speaking of punch, 
Um, James also hand-painted a mural on the wall at Za restaurant. James has created a peaceful and idyllic scene in eye-popping colors. The mural started with the projection at night of the shapes and then gradually filling them in with color. One message to take away from this mural, as well as James's bus shelter, is that taking the bus is a way to contribute to protecting the environment by reducing carbon and helping to reduce climate change. The fifth project was created by Johnny Lapham. Johnny's story is a little different from all of the others. While we were organizing the bus shelter project, Johnny was transforming the Arlington service station on Mass Avenue. I met him while he was working. Uh, he was up on a lift painting, um, painting the canopy of the service station. He came down and we started talking and I asked him if he would be willing to create a design for a nearby bus shelter that would continue this colorful artwork. He painted by hand a series of more complicated circular designs using the same kind of house paint on the, shelter, on the bus shelter as he used for the service station. From the inside of the bus shelter, again, the, the paint lights up like a stained glass window. And from the outside, it's much more solid. But Johnny took this really far. He ended up making a series of 80 plywood discs to create the sense that the circles had jumped down from the service station canopy and were traveling uh, across the pavement. He stenciled more circles onto the pavement. He wanted to make it look like the circles had jumped off the service station, traveled down the sidewalk, and landed on the bus shelter to have a kind of party. That was his image, that there was a party happening in the bus shelter, and it's a party the whole town is invited to. You just have to take the bus. The bus stops are just part of an explosion of creative activity in town. Much of it is being inspired by the Mass Cultural Council's official designation of the Arlington Cultural District. A cultural district helps create a vision and focus on community building and neighborhood development through arts and culture that can be shared by diverse stakeholders, town planners, businesses, artists, nonprofits, libraries, and schools. This next segment is about how one neighborhood in the district, my neighborhood, is benefiting from such a partnership. And can we all uh, introduce ourselves? My name's Abe. I work in the gas station out at the service station. I'm Mass Ave. Mass Ave. I'm John. And I'm Johnny Lapham. I'm, uh, I'm actually a customer of Abe's. I live right around the corner from the gas station. And I'm an artist and also an activist. And again, Cecily. I'm uh, Cecily Miller. I'm the Arlington Public Arts public art curator. I've been organizing various ways of getting art out into public space for about three years in Arlington now. Right. And again, I'm Suwardi Kedda, and I'm a commissioner with the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. I'm also a Hardy School dad and in East <laughs> Arlington in a neighborhood uh, resident, and I've really enjoyed the what you've done there with the gas station and the bus stop project, and that's what I w we wanted to talk about tonight. So if we could just get back to the, the, the station for a second. I mean, it's an amazing design. It's colorful. It's whimsical. It's, uh, it's a work of art in itself. And Abe, can you tell us what inspired you to prepare the uh, station that way? The station, oh my god, that was uh, the change. You know, so I've been talking with John like how long, two years maybe, about the color and the design a different way. So I come up with the idea, he come up with the color and we decide to choose a color and that's what he did it. So that was all about John. He make it happen. And so, which is good, you know what I mean? Like everybody like it and everybody love it. And I'm very happy to do it for the neighborhood, the town and my, you know, my customers and all people around me. What, but you could have just painted it one color. It would have cost less money. It would have, you know, spruced the place up. But what made you want to have a design that, like that, uh, to actually, reach out to an artist? Actually, like, I wanted something like a little crazy. That's, 
Why well, Santa Johnny? You know what I mean? So I want to. I don't want to be like same color like everybody else. You know what I mean? They all stand up the same color. You know, so I have to be something a little different. You know, you feel like you little like Caribbean car color. You know, it's all different color. You know, so that's how I want it. You know. So can yeah. you tell us how you work together? Sure. Uh, yeah, Abe. Uh, um, he said he said he wanted he really wanted to give something to the neighborhood and the town that was you know, you'd, you would notice it it would be distinctive but also just responding to the the um, you know all of the additions of art and public art that we're having in the cultural district in Arlington um, so he said he wanted something funky and fun um, family friendly but also just like much more um, uh, more of a design than just just simple colors. So I I went and um, I actually uh, did a did a um, did several versions of this is a drawing of his gas station and I did several versions of the of the design with different colors. Um, so it was the same the same basic design, but I used different background colors and trim colors and. Um, Tried to see if Abe wanted to pick one, and he said, "He said you're the artist. You pick the one that that you like the best, and this is the one that we went with." Um, so, uh, I, I I would just want to say one thing mm -hmm. about the design, which I didn't know that an art project was underway. I was just driving my usual route along Mass Avenue to get from my house to Town Hall, and I could see right away. I was like whoa, what is going on there? What because the, the colors are yeah. so unusual. If you yes. had done this in bright blue, yellow, and red, it would have just looked like a standard, standard something mm -hmm. you would yeah. see in yeah. a drugstore, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, a little kid's birthday party. But these are actually really sophisticated and kind of strange colors mixed with a very happy design of sort of dots and stripes. And so... It really does stand out. I mean, I think anyone I with visual it. sensitivity yeah. will be like, oh, somebody's thought about this a lot to have such an unusual and they're both, arrangement it's both of color. Retro and modern at the same time. It feels very current to me, but with the dots and everything, it also feels very uh, mid century or something. And it uh, turned this canopy, the canopy, into a, like a piece of sculpture. It is, yeah. It's a beautiful. <laughs> uh, we had we had fun with it. Um, my friend Isaac Honeywell and I um, painted it after I had designed it. Um, we spent a month there with, um, you know, just working over and above and on top of the 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 gas station didn't stop working either. So we were we were up on scaffolding and an electric lift and um, just. Uh, uh, had a great time getting to know the guys who work there. Um, they're all wonderful guys. And um, the customers coming in and out and going, what are you doing? And we love it and we love the yeah. colors. So it was, it was really a blast uh, just being on site there, um, putting, up the, putting up the design. I think the other thing that it does is it reinforces that this is an independent service station. Yes. This isn't, you know, mobile or shell, mm -hmm. if this is a, a small business that has roots in the community, that cares about its employees, yes. that cares about the neighborhood. It's all and, mind. you know, I think a lot of people in Arlington, that's something they really value about the culture and fabric of this I town is it. the small independent local businesses. And I know I've started buying my gas from you now. I appreciate so, it. Thank you very yeah, much. You know. I, I got a lot it. of customers to buy the gas from me because of the color. Uh -huh. And I get a lot of phone calls left and right, and the people, a lot of people love the color, which is huge on. You know, so <laughs> you, you come up with the color, the design, and everything, you know, which is I love it, and everybody love it, and everybody happy. Especially when I'm driving like, like it was Adam Street and going down and see the colors, and oh my God, something is different. Mm -hmm. It wasn't station I know before, you know. So I would love to do more in the future. So that's where we start, and hopefully we will see what's going on next year. It was. It was a really amazing opportunity for me as an artist. Um, I had, I had made, um, you know, I painted furniture before and mirror frames and uh, paintings, you know. But I've, I'd done this kind of design work on, on much smaller things, and so to be able to to look at a building and say, um, 
how does this, how can we make this really distinctive? How can we respond to what's there um, and just bring out the architecture of what mm -hmm. it is, but yeah. just take something that's a very generic, um, you know, normal building and, and uh, liven it up and make it special. It was amazing to me to be able to just, you know, just take my colors and put them on a whole building. It was, um, I funny. thank you, brother. To, thank for, you. No, thank you. For being a chance to do it and trusting me to, to make it look good. Thank you. And one uh, thing I, I, I want to point out, we, we called it an art project, but it was, it was a, a businessman who, who decided to do this for himself. You didn't get a grant. It wasn't a town committee that no, you were. That's right. It was, it's true public art that you've, you've, you paid for out of your own pocket. Yes. You decided you wanted to do something for the neighborhood. Yeah. And for that, we all really thank you. I'm, I'm very happy. And, Everybody uh, love it. You yeah. know what I mean? Which is make me happy. You know what I mean? Everybody, every single customer I see, like, hey, thumb up. You know what I mean? So everybody love it, which is good. I love it. What would you say to a business owner in Arlington who's thinking about doing a project like this? What would be your advice to them? I wish everybody do the same. You know, every single business. You know what I mean? We like to see change. You know what I mean? Like wherever you go, wherever you drive, it's all the build, building that look the same color and blue and white and gray. And, and we like to bring like fun color, you know what I mean? Like and the people love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how did it, but like I said, it's a catalyst for even more change on the mm -hmm. block. It wasn't just your, it started out just being your station, mm -hmm. but then it transformed the entire block. So how did you, how did the dots morph from just, you know, well, being a single building project. Can you guys talk about that? Yeah, I mean, that? Th that was partly because, as I say, I had driven by and was wondering what was going on, and so I stopped, and Johnny was up there on the lift working away, and so he came down, and we talked, and I asked him if he would be interested in participating in this project where artists were transforming bus shelters as a way to draw attention to the town's efforts to improve public transportation. It's called the BRT Pilot Project. And, um, you know, I, I thought there's a bus shelter not very far on the same block as the service station, and if Johnny could develop a coordinated design, that would be fantastic because it would also give the bus shelter, which is a relatively small structure, more presence if, if the bus shelter related to the business. And then you have something coherent happening. And um, I don't know if it was in our conversation that we had the uh, kind of brainstormed the idea of like, what if the dots just jump, were jumping off of the <laughs> gas station structure and hopping down the street and made their way to the bus shelter? And you really ran with that idea. Yeah, absolutely. And it was, it was um, trying to figure out how to, how to get them not just onto the sidewalk, but up, up visually so that people in the, you know, the pedestrians could see them, but also people in the cars could see them, people could see them from across the street. The dots are on plywood and they come down off of the, across your fence mm -hmm. um, and out, know, out yeah. onto the street and then they, they run right down um, through the bushes for a whole, a whole city block. Uh, you made in the end 80, 80, 80 plywood, plywood discs, discs. And, um, <laughs> ranging from what this the big, size, three yeah. feet, three feet, and, to and <coughs> eight inches. Can you and talk a little bit about how you enlisted your neighbors sure. and friends? Yeah, yeah. There's just been so such incredible excitement and support in the neighborhood for doing it, and um, going that big with these eighty dots that we we eventually had to put on stakes and and plant in the ground. Um, I had a whole weekend, uh, borrowed a neighbor's garage and driveway, and there were over 20 people that came, family, friends, and lots of neighbors painting, you know, a couple stripes, a whole, some people were there for hours, uh, just painting these dots um, to, to fit the design. Um, and so I got a ton of help from, yeah. from those folks, as well as help, help again from Isaac putting them up and, uh, and then again, uh, another few people helped me paint the, the bus shelter itself. And this is one of the things about a public art project. Challenge, public art, putting art in the public space is very challenging. And 
Johnny, I know you had to worry about were the discs going to be put in in a way where they would be a tripping hazard because, of course, the town won't permit that. Uh, uh, because if someone trips, they'll sue the town, they'll sue you, they'll sue everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and also the scale that you need to work at. I mean, you were already learning that working on the service station, but uh, if you think of a public street and everything that's going on on it with signs and driveways and cars coming and going and commercial signage and plantings and trees, how do you make an impact? You've got to you've got to go big. And part of the way you went big was by having 80 of these plywood yeah. di discs. And in fact, I think the average pedestrian might be surprised that it's 80, that it takes 80 to make an impact on someone walking down that's the street. Right. That's right. And that's a lot of work for one person. Yeah, yeah. And I and so so I did get a lot of help. I got a lot of, um, uh, it was wonderful to be on the street. Uh, so many people said, love the colors, love the design, thank you. I, I, was, I was really especially thrilled to hear people say thank you, mm -hmm. um, just to be, be able to be making my art and, and have people kind of shout out thank you for doing that. Um, and I, I also wanted to say, Cecily, it was amazing. Your, your work in your role as the curator of the project, but the work, you know, the work that goes on between the artist and the vision, and then actually getting it approved by the MBTA and the town, and um, you know all different issues of insurance, and um, is it going to be removable, and all of those right, things. Right, right. You're, you're testing different materials. I mean, there are, Johnny also did stencils yeah. on the on the uh, pavement, and he had to test a bunch of different uh, types of paint to figure out what would last the longest, what would match his color palette. Um, the MBTA had to uh, look at the sketches, ask for small changes so that the MBTA felt that the bus shelter would still be safe, that people could see in and out of it and not worry that they were going to come to any kind of harm if somebody was lurking outside the bus shelter. So they're, they're, they also needed to leave a major part of it blank so that the bus drivers could see if anyone was waiting in the bus shelter That's and make right. sure they picked up the passengers. So these things are always a little more complicated. And Johnny, you really did the work of a community artist in knocking on the door of a neighbor and um, talking to a... George, a, who a, lives there as the house right that next story? to the... Um, this is the bus shelter right right next to Walgreens. And, and the, I needed some... To, to make the design work, I needed to bring the dots right through his yard. And he was he was more than happy to have them there and really loved, loved the design, uh, being an artist himself. And, uh, uh, and you guys, I just want to, again, on behalf of the neighborhood being... A neighborhood guy, thank you for the, the the whimsical beautification of our entire neighborhood. The feedback I get is it makes people happy. It is, <laughs> and you. we need happiness on Mass Ave in rush hour. Yes, people sitting in dark, cold, you know, bus stops. It just puts a smile on everyone's face, and it's a sign of what can happen when businesses, uh, town committees. The, the government, artists, everybody gets together and tries to uh, make an improvement in our town and our neighborhood. So thank you guys no, for doing you. this, and thank yeah. you, Abe, for, yeah. for your inspiration. I appreciate yeah, it. Thanks, thank you. brother. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, yeah. it. And remember, you can find details of these projects and lots of other arts information online at the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture website, artsarlington.org. You'll find a uh, calendar of cultural events, uh, artist resources, grants, exhibitions information, an interactive map of the cultural district, uh, information about the town arts and culture action plan. And yeah. This is a brand new site. It's beautiful. We put a lot of time and thought into it because we heard from the citizens of Arlington that they wanted one stop, one place to go to find out what's happening in Arlington. And if you're an artist, a musician, a writer, um, you can promote your event free listings through this website. Dance, we're open to every art form. So please use the site, visit it often. Right. And with that, I'll say good night. Uh, again, I'm Stuart Ikeda from the Arlington Commission of Arts and Culture. And I'm Cecily Miller. I'm the um, Curator for Public Art for the Town of Arlington. And thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.